Hello everyone and welcome to campaign three of the Real D&D podcast. I am your DM, as always. This will actually be my last season DMing the Real D&D podcast, so we are on the hunt for a new DM because I am graduating. But some exciting news, this is going to be the first campaign in which we play all year. So we're starting here in October, and then we're going to try and work through next semester as well, which is very, very exciting. But no, this is not a college town like Campaign 1. No, this is not a weird body swap like Campaign 2. This is your classic heist. So let's get started. I'm going to roll my d4, and let's see. So we are in the kingdom of Astaria, a gated kingdom in which everybody inside has never been outside of these walls. There is in this kingdom a pretty rundown looking castle in which the royal family resides. They are rarely seen by the public and then a majority of this kingdom is just people trying their hardest to get by and attempt to follow all of these crazy rules that are being now put into place. So, we see a half-elf woman walking down the street. Sam, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Eliana. I'm a half-elf monk. Uh, I've got shoulder-length straight black hair, green eyes. Um, I'm like an average height. Um, 22. So where do you think that you're walking to on this typical day? Um, I think I'm probably walking over to work at the antique shop. So you walk into the antique shop and you look around. As normal, there's not a ton of customers. Um, What do you start to do? I pick up where I probably left off the day before, doing some inventory. Um, uh, Some books. So as you are browsing around, taking inventory, you hear the bell of the door ring and in comes in Sailor, who just looks like she has the hottest gossip ever. And she just looks at you and you go, she goes, you will never believe this. Ask her to spill. Okay, so the newest, the newest column came out and there is some new gossip around the kingdom. So apparently people are saying that the prince is actually sick. At least that's what it says here on this gossip column. What do you think he's sick with? Well, I mean, we haven't seen him, like, ever. So he could be dead for all we know. Imagine him being dead. I feel like we would definitely know, even though they're secretive. I don't know. It's been a long time since we've seen the royal family. But he is also there, like only heir so if he dies she's not gonna be popping out any more kids i don't know what's gonna happen um, do you think it has anything to do with the stricter rules oh let me let me see if there if let me see if they say anything on the gossip columns about that mm, yeah i'd say probably like it looks like Maybe they are, maybe he's sick with something that, like, kills you at night, and that's why we have a curfew now. Like a werewolf? (laughs) Maybe. Maybe he's a werewolf. That would definitely make a gossip column. Well, I mean, I just wanted to let you know. I I have to get back to work, but... Here, here, look at this. And she hands you a newspaper, and it's just, like, 
there is like no good news, like all, all newspapers. It's just, it's just like crops aren't aren't surviving. Kingdoms seem shut down. Still not allowed to leave. The knights are being ruder and meaner. Um, but then there's like a side little gossip column that you know is against the law to have and you are so confused as to how it's been running this long but you're not gonna you're not gonna question it because it's the only for like form of entertainment that you guys really have so sailor she, right. she walks out the door and you're just left to the antique shop alone with a newspaper is there anything you want to do i want to even though, like, it's been running, I want, like, the gossip column, I want to, like, hide the newspaper. Okay. You can actually roll a stealth check for me. First roll of the campaign. Is that something I do on the website? So you can either do a... If you have physical dice, you can use physical dice, or you can use no. online dice. That's That works, too. Okay. So you're just going to go to D&D Beyond, and... Um, there will be this list of like skills and you're going to look for stealth and then click on uh, where it says plus or minus whatever your bonus is. I say that digital dice. Mm -hmm. I like had the lips open and I closed it. <laughs> mm. I can't find it. Where am I going? Okay, so are you at your character sheet right now? Yes. Okay, so like right in the middle, there's like a skill sheet where it says like acrobatics, animal handling. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, just yes. go down to stealth. It's the second to last yep. one. And then click that little uh, square at the right side of that column. The one with the number? Yeah. Huh. Five. Okay, so you don't manage to hide it very well. Like, if someone were to come in here and, like, they wouldn't just, like, outright know to look for it. But if someone was doing, like, a sweep of the store, they would see it. But ultimately, I don't think you should be too worried about it. So is there anything else that you'd like to do before I move on to our next person? No, I think I am good. Okay, and I will see who number two is. Okay. So, now, we go over just a few stores. You're at the storefront on this street, just like two stores over, is a potion and spell book shop that, you know, Everybody here knows that is not technically allowed. So it's really, you know, this is a front for potions and spell books and crystals. And inside, you see Avery. Would you like to describe your character? Sure. <laughs> so I have my name. <laughs> I have my name as Taryn Godfrey, and I'm the shop owner. And so I have this character <laughs> as an average height. Wears cool tone colors, has braids with beads and and other trinkets in it, and just a whimsical person. So, Avery, um, what type of store is Taryn running to like keep up the appearance that this is a normal store? A bookstore. A bookstore. So, inside we see Taryn putting books away, doing inventory, which seems to be what everybody's doing around this time of day, <laughs> is, um, and you look outside the window and you see just a normal day, people are walking by, and of course, everybody has a newspaper in their hand, so, so excited. Mm-hmm, what? Sorry, I need Abby's guidance. <laughs> no, you're okay. Um, so what are you going to do in this moment? Seeing people holding the newspapers? You're just at your, you're just at your work. Is there anything specific oh, yeah. you want to be doing? 
stocking shelves, um, helping customers find whatever they need. Mm -hmm. So kind of just helping around. And I think that that is a really good time to actually introduce Abby's character. Yeah. So the, the doorbell rings as Abby's character walks in. Would you like to describe your character? So I am a human druid named... I just... Double check. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Okay. Name, <laughs> named Kyrie. Um, and Kyrie is a, as I said, druid. She loves her spell casting. She's about my height, so short, but she's really feisty. She's an entertainer. She's a musician. Um, she plays gigs around town. She mainly, she's chaotic neutral. So she does where she follows the money. She doesn't really care who asks her to perform or why. She just does. So, and Kyrie knows yeah Kyrie knows Taryn because we're both druids we're like childhood friends and so I'm just coming in I'm coming in to check on my bestie while while she's at work all right Taryn you see your best friend walk in the door what do you say <laughs> hey girl <laughs> sorry I greet her um because I've known her for a long time obviously so a nice hug and kind of catch up moment all right what do you guys catch up about Daily living, work, her gigs, my bookstore ownership, run of the mill. <laughs> All right, Abby, uh, t ugh, not Taryn, sorry, Kyrie, is there anything that you specifically say to your best friend? Um, so my Kyrie is not a t huge fan of like the royal family, and the monarch, and what's running the, the town. So I come up to, to Taryn and I just start complaining about government stuff, mm -hmm. as I do. <laughs> I complain about politics. That's, yeah, no, that's fair. So I would, I would like you both to actually give me perception checks really quick. So, because you know, okay what you do. Burp. You would go down here if you had it. Mm-hmm. Rubble. So, I have a 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And for now, we'll just keep our stats the same because you haven't had your character yet. Okay. So, you roll for me as well. And Taryn got a 23, and I got a 15. Okay. So, Taryn... As you see your best friend walk in, you know immediately what she is going to start doing. So you have the the knowledge to immediately go lock the door so that nobody walks in and hears her at her large, I hate the monarchy debacle. And as you're locking the door, you glance outside the window and you see a night walk by grab a newspaper from somebody's hand look at it and then immediately crumple it up and throw it on the ground and step on it oh <laughs> so i don't know all of my column writing materials are behind closed doors so i'm not too worried about it although it does <laughs> It's a punch to the ego, because I wrote that column. <laughs> but I know <laughs> that all of my materials are kept away secret, so I'm not too worried about it. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Is there anything else you two would like to add before we move on? I don't think so. I think we're good. Okay. Then we are going to cut over to a small little man um would you like to introduce yourself jack yes so <clears throat> my name is poplin uh i am a small little forest gnome and i am 350 years old 
um, very thin with sort of puffy white hair that kind of wraps around the side of his head, but he's totally bald on the top. Uh, dressed in very simple clothes, just, you know, shirt, pants, shoes, and he's got this big, uh, big jacket on. And every so often as he's just walking through, uh, if he sees anything interesting, he will pull a little notebook out of his breast pocket and just jot something down uh, and then leave. And right now he's just, yeah, dressed as a civilian with no really interesting uh, details about his appearance, very basic, uh, under the radar clothing. So where are you going right now? So most likely he would be walking from his house to his job at the library. I already see some competition. We've got a librarian and a bookstore <laughs> owner. Yeah. So you walk over to the library, nothing's out of the ordinary about this day, and you walk in and you see your best friend Danny is just sitting at the sitting at the counter just in the, like, the very end of a book. Like, you could tell he has, like, almost one page left. And you watch as he is about to turn the page to to finish the book, and then he just shuts it and puts it, and puts it down. And then he looks up and sees you, and he goes, Hey, Poplin! I didn't think you were getting in this early. I don't have much else to do, so figured I might as well. Yeah, I'm Show up early. I mean... What was, what was the matter with your book? You seem to close it rather aggressively. Oh, you know me, I don't... I don't finish a book. I can't... I don't want to know what the ending is. That means the story's over. That's fair. He gets up and he starts putting books away and... They're in absolutely no particular order to, like, anybody besides you two. But the, you two have a system that makes sense in your mind. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of get close-ish to him and pretend like I'm, you know, doing the same. Well, not necessarily pretend, but just start doing the same thing he's doing and just kind of whisper, Is anyone else in here? He... Um, opens a, he opens the book that he has in his hand and he attempts to like cover the both of your mouths with it like the newspaper thing and he goes and he looks around and says nobody's in here yet but I'm sure somebody's going to be coming in here soon and then out of character I have a question yes so, we have our letters that we've received, mm -hmm. respectively, right? Is this happening, like, are the events happening right now after or before we've received this letter? Right before. I guess I did not clarify right, that. You will be getting right your before? letter okay. after this day, yes. Okay. Uh, well, then, I will just silently... Uh, nod to Danny and then walk off somewhere else in the library and start uh, organizing and reshell. I'm not sure if you cut off or if I did. Can anybody else hear me right now? I can. Okay, good. Can you, Jack? Solving. We can hear you. Okay, here we go. I'm back now. Okay, yeah. cool. Th this happens sometimes. I apologize. You're good. I wasn't sure if I was the one who cut out or not. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. You're good. But yes, I go, I go off somewhere else and start just doing inventory as everyone else is doing. As you're doing... As you're all doing inventory at the exact same time, every person here 
Um, you see the night that normally you're you're a very perspective perceptive man. You know the ins and outs of this area very very well. You know how who walks around this corner at this particular time of day and normally a knight walks right past the door right now every day and you can tell that he is nowhere to be found so you think something must be going on in the town that's keeping him from what he normally would be doing Okay. Uh, during, between when I walked away, like, how much time has passed since, like, until this happens? You are collect. you're doing inventory, putting books away for approximately, like, 20 minutes when you know it's time to glance out the window and wave at the night as he walks by, and as you go, he is not there. He's not there, okay. Has, has anybody else walked into the library? Nobody since? else has walked, like, nobody else has walked down this street. Okay, okay. Uh, then I am going to go and lock the front door, uh, give Danny kind of a knowing glance, and sort of nod my head in the direction of our basement and head down there. He uh, just winks at you and continues putting things away, acting nonchalant, you know that means he will be down there in approximately three minutes, just so you guys don't go okay. down there at the exact same time. Okay. So you and walk down, as you walk down yeah, stairs, what does your guys' like, underground basement layer situation like look like? Yeah, so it's just, um, it's a very sort of crude, just square stone room, uh, just like cobblestone all in the walls and the ceiling and the floor. And there's in, in one corner, there's like a little training dummy sort of. Uh, and, th and then the other corner, there's like an actual target. And then there's this big, just sort of like calling it a mat is a overstatement. It's just like an extra thick rug and uh on either wall there's just these uh these racks that have various uh simple basic weaponry hanging there and yeah poplin is just gonna go up to his side uh get his bow and his quiver and his two uh his two short swords and just you know sort of equipped everything and then put his jacket back on over and try and hide everything the best he can. Mm -hmm. So you're hoping to, like, hide the fact that you have weapons on you right now? As best as I can, yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, I would say... I don't even know what... I would say either roll a sleight of hand or a stealth. It's up to you. Okay. Oh my god. That is a 24 for stealth. Okay. So, you know that the not not only will the untrained eye not notice that you have any weapons on you, you know that unless like somebody is specifically like looking for weapons on you, nobody will notice. Cool. As you right. are getting ready and everything, down walks Danny, and he notices rather quickly that 
you don't that like your the weapons that you deem as yours are gone from where they normally are and he looks at you and goes what's going on I don't know something's happening the night that usually walks by wasn't there so that means he's somewhere else and if he's somewhere else something's going on that deems nice to be somewhere else so we should be ready understood and he walks over and he grabs his weapon of choice what um i don't think i yeah, listed do you, one no do you have a class for danny or is that just up to me uh, i i'll just leave that up to you because okay. i didn't i didn't think that far <laughs> no you're good he I'm trying to think he walks over probably a he, ranger too that's what i say he walks over and he grabs uh, a, sh- a short sword and he hides it within his jacket and then he looks at you and he goes, are we going together to see what's going on? Yeah, we should stick together. Okay, let's, let's go. So you two w- walk down the street and you notice that like nobody is down this street but you can hear commotion from like in front of you and like just like around the corner and as you turn the corner um you all everybody here can notice that outside on the on the street in front of the bookshop and the antique shop is um is like a large crowd is gathering as a knight is holding like a very fancy looking paper uh, like above his head and just like not not even saying anything just looking at it like like everybody come here and notice me. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, just stay near the back of this gathering, and yeah, just stand and wait until he starts talking. I guess. Um. What about um? What do uh Taryn and Kyrie do? Sorry, say that one more time. Oh, what do Karen and Tyree do when they notice this crowd that's developing in front of their shop? Okay, so I think we kind of... There's a bit of panic. <laughs> we, we, we look at each other frantically. We make eye contact. We run to the door, but we don't go outside. We just kind of look and see if um, we can see what's going on. Okay. Um, you can both roll perception checks for me. And as you do that, um, Eliana, can you also roll one for me? Mm-hmm. Do you want mine? Yes. I got 12. 12? Okay. Um, what did uh, Kyrie and Taryn get? So, um, mm-hmm. Taryn got a, a 24. 24 and I got a 14. Okay, so... Eliana and Kyrie, you know that you you know that this means an announce an official announcement is being made from the <coughs> king and queen, but the only one who's able to like actually read the words that are on the like paper is Taryn and Taryn on the paper just says New rules are to be instated tomorrow. Um, like, like, that, and that's, like, very boldly, new rules are to be instated tomorrow. Come to the town square at noon for a mandatory, um, a mandatory, uh, speech from... Announcement? Announcement, thank you. (laughs) I was like, this is not a meeting. (laughs) 
Okay, so I see this, and I'm. A, I, what is it, Kyrie? Mm -hmm. I w I'm with Kyrie, and we decide that we'll go, but we're gonna kind of lay low and stay towards the back. Can I ask someone around me if they could read it, since I see it looks official? As you, so you leave the shop. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to get too far into the crowd. I still want to be able to quickly get back to my shop. So, you, as you leave your shop, you look and you see a halfling and a dwarf standing next to you. And, um, and Danny then goes, looks at, looks at Poplin and says, there's an announcement tomorrow. And really. So I overhear this? Yes. Okay. I guess I hear that and then I go back to my shop since it doesn't seem like anything else is gonna be said. Okay. So how long do Poplin and Danny stay in this crowd before they decide to go back to the library? Once, uh, once they see other people start just like walking away they'll do the same okay the knight stands there for like 10 minutes and then he goes to a different street corner to do the same thing so that eventually everybody will get the information to go to the town square tomorrow so i'd say you guys were there for like probably five minutes before you decide to walk back and was this the was this the night that i yes this is that the... usually walk by yes okay. And then Taryn and Kyrie, uh, what do you get up to after this big announcement in front of your store? We go back to our shop, or my shop, and we continue about our day and we uh, continue our conversations. Sounds good. So anything anybody would like to do before it is night time? I think... I go home and let my dad know that there's a big announcement tomorrow. Your dad, uh, when you walk in, your dad is sitting on, like, sitting at the kitchen table, and it looks like he's clearly been there all day. He hasn't really moved. And when you say this, he just doesn't really acknowledge that he heard you, but he gives you a like a, just like a, like, friendly eye contact when he gets, and he gets back to, um, just kind of s staring. I, uh, did I get the impression from the, like, announcement about the announcement that it's, like, required for everybody, or? Yes, you get the, well, actually, make me an insight check. Twenty-three. Uh, then yes, you. While you were when you went outside and you were overhearing what it was said on the sign, you did hear the word mandatory. Okay, I like smallly smile back at my dad and say, like, ask him if he would be able to go with me. He looks up at you and says, I'll be there, but I will be there with you. I nod and take that as good enough and head upstairs. He just keeps sitting there and you know this is how it is every night. He's just going to sit there until it's eventually time to go to sleep. You're unsure of, like, when in the day he actually, like, eats and does activities to survive, but every time you seem to see him, he just is in another world. Uh, what about, uh, Taryn and Kyrie? Is there anything you're gonna do you two are doing for the evening? 
So I think for the evening we lock up and we start kind of practicing our like illegal like little potions and little things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so are you like taking a random potion? What's up to you? That's kind of your thing. Like taking? Like, like are you like drinking a potion? I think it's more crafting. Okay. I have um, a secret room behind a bookcase that I have all of my equipment in. Mm -hmm. And so we're making potions for some underground sales this upcoming week. Okay, so you guys, you guys um, have been doing this for long enough that you know what you're doing. You don't need, like, there's no role necessary. You sit there, you make potions. Um, and you bottle them up, package them, put them on the shelf where they go. Yep. Um, and then Poplin, is there anything you're doing for the evening? Yeah, so when we get back from the announcement, I'm going to go back into the basement and I'm going to sort of motion Danny to do the same when I'm done. Uh put all my weapons and stuff up. Uh, I'm going to make a sign that just says mandatory meeting in town square tomorrow at whenever, I don't remember when he said it was going to be at, but just make the sign, sort of paste it up in a window. And then um, after I'm done with like library stuff, I'm go because just like you know, continue working as if it's a normal day. Yeah, yeah. And then after after I'm done with that, I'm going to walk to my sister and her husband's house and just tell them about the meeting because they're both very old as well. So I want to make sure that they have the information as well. And then after that, I'm gonna just head back to my house and turn in for the evening, I guess. Okay. So, you all eventually head back to your respective homes. You all get ready for bed, go to sleep, and (coughs) you all wake up in the middle of the night to, like, just a noise of somebody. Somebody seems to have been, like, in your room. Oh, no, no, no. You're mistaken. Nobody's in your room. You just heard something. It's the middle of the night. Floor must have creaked. An animal must have walked by. Something must have happened. No, it, it wasn't a person. And you eventually manage to fall back asleep. And when you wake up, respectively, all for all four of you, there is a note not on like your bedside table or like not like in your mailbox the note is like on on you as you're sleeping it's on your chest so as you open up your eyes and you see there's something on your chest that you did not go to sleep it was not there when you fell asleep you open it up and for our uh, viewers at home the note for all four of our players says We have been watching you for some time and are interested in your skills. Come to the castle gates at midnight or your secret will be revealed. Prepare to be away from home for some time. And if you succeed in your mission, your sins will be forgiven. And then it's signed D. So what do you guys do as you awaken and see this letter? I'm going to... uh panic at first for a good 20 30 minutes then once i calm myself down uh walk back to the library share my or i'm gonna walk yeah walk back to the library and see if if danny's there uh you get to the library the exact same thing that happened yesterday is happening he's sitting there he has a book he has more left than usual he has like a chapter left he notices that you're here, and he shuts it, no bookmark, 
puts it in his pile of books that he's never going to finish, and looks up at you. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hand him the note and tell him that it was appeared on my chest in the middle of the night. He looks at you confused as you hand him the note, and he opens it and reads it, and his face is kind of getting, it goes from confused to concerned to scared in like a matter of seconds. And then once he gets to the bottom of the note and he sees that it's signed by D, he looks up at you and he goes, as in like the king? And um, you know that there is the kids, the King Declan and the Queen Daisy. And you're not sure if this is sign as this is meant to be from the king, from the queen, from someone else with the same initial. You're just not sure. You didn't get one of these, did you, Danny? He puts his hands in front of him and he looks, so this not some joke you're playing on me, this is something that actually happened, you actually got this? Yes. No, no, I did not get this. When you got this, you you just woke up and this was on your chest? Yes. Oh my goodness. Did you lock your doors last night? I think so. Oh, well, that's great. Okay. Think so. He just looks at the letter again and then hands it back to you. And he takes a deep breath and says, I, are are you going? I don't think I've got much of a choice. Do you want me to go with you? I don't know if that'd be such a good idea, because if we both just disappear, then something's definitely, people will know something's going. Okay, um, okay, bring everything we have. I can't carry everything we have. Okay, good point, good point. Bring everything we have that you think would be necessary. Do you know anybody who has, like, potions or any magic that you could use? I've I've heard a little bit about someone that I think might be might sell potions but other than the things we have in the basement that's the only lead I've got God, okay um I will ask around try and figure some stuff out see if anybody else knows anything about this but There's no good scenario here. If it's from the royal family and they find out that you're bringing weapons and magic on whatever quest this is, they're probably going to be upset. But if it's... But if you don't bring those and it's just a normal person blackmailing you... Well, they obviously know what we've got going on. Or at least they know that we've got something going on. So I don't think that they would necessarily, I think they expect us to show up with weapons and such, because it says, it says they, they've they been watching us and are interested in the skills. Yeah, it also says prepare My skills, away. I guess. <sighs> yup. Why your skills are not mine? Am I not good? I'm just cooler than you, I guess. I don't know, Danny. You are older. Aren't they? <laughs> Um, I don't think we have much of an option. I don't think I don't think I have much of an option. No, that's 
No, I, I agree. I think that this is just what's happening now. I look after the library. Um, are you still going to go to the announcement today? Yeah, we should. Okay. We should. Okay, that's fair. I'm... I'm going to go unarmed, just because... I don't want to accidentally draw any more attention to us than we need to. It's fair. So... I mean, they did say to meet at the castle, so... It must... It must be the royal family. I guess we'll find out at midnight tonight, hopefully. Oh, oh. gosh, I guess you have no oh. way of getting back to me, do you? Yeah, I was just about to say, i see if I can find some way of getting word to you, but... I don't know if that's gonna happen. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Okay, I'll get, if you figure out a way to keep me in the loop, do that. If not, good luck, and I'm going to start asking around, see if I know anything, um, and I think you should probably do the same. I will. Okay, okay. He walks towards, he just straight up leaves the library, and you see him walk away at a very, like, faster than he normally walks. Um, how about, uh, Eliana, what are you, what was your reaction to waking up to this letter on your chest? Did you say we, like, briefly woke up in the middle of the night? Yeah. Um, do I recall seeing or hearing anything even slightly amiss? Um, give me, give me a perception check. With, I'd say, give me a perception check with disadvantage because it was the middle of the night. Um, and how you do that is you go to perception, um, and then you right click and click disadvantage. Huh? Which just means you're rolling two dice and you're taking the smaller number. So, 14. Wow. <laughs> um,. You know for a fact that you locked your door last night, you locked your window, you heard your dad go up to bed, what he normally does. You know that this was a pretty normal night. The only difference was you don't normally wake up in the middle of the night with an uneasy feeling of you're being watched, but you did. So for really the best that you can, the best that you can think is that someone must have found a way to get in here undetected and then lock up when they left because doors were locked this morning, your window was locked, nothing was broken, nothing was out of place. So the person who must have put this letter on your chest must have either done it with magic, which you know is illegal, or with just so much skill that they were able to lock the door behind themselves. I guess the next question I had was, can I tell from anything in the note if it came from the castle whether it was the king and queen or not or they're just saying to me to at the castle I'd say give me an investigation check okay. uh, 15 15 okay you can tell that you work, you work at an antique shop you see like, like, official letters from the capital, or official letters from the um, king and queen that have been pawned off and are now collecting dust waiting to be bought. And you can tell that the same 
the same, like, it's like the same paper. It's the same, like, thickness. It's not like normal paper that you guys use. It's like cardstock that has been very, like, it's, it's trying to look like it's not important, but is clearly important. Okay. Fancy expensive um, paper, basically. Fancy expensive fancy paper. Expensive, probably royal paper. <laughs> um, I want to plan to tell my dad that I'm like going on like an antique research trip or something, but not till after the meeting. Okay. I don't want to tell him till after the meeting. Okay. Um, is there anything you do before the meeting? Mm. Since I know, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna go basically to the castle. Um, I'm gonna go to the antique shop and do like another look around, or like since I do inventory, but like another look around to see if there's anything I can think to grab that might help me. Maybe like a magical item or something that I've missed. Okay. Um, when you get to the antique shop. Give me a, another investigation check. All the checks. Six. Six. Okay, give yeah. it to me with advantage because you work here. Okay. <laughs> advantage. Nine. Nine? Okay, I will... Um... <laughs> So you look around and you're combing through everything that you can, really everything that you can think to um, grab and you, oh my goodness, sorry, I'm trying so hard. You are... You are drawn to this area that has not seemed to have been touched in a while. And you look, it's just like a pile of clothes. You pick them up and you see it's like, there's a pair of boots, there's a pair of, there's like uh, some like old t-shirts that are supposedly worth millions. Um, but the thing that you think is the most interesting is this black cloak that has caught your eye. You don't know if it's magical or if it's just something warm to wear. So you, um, for Sam's purposes, you can add a cloak of elven kind to your inventory, but you, you like the player, like uh, yep. El Eliana doesn't know what it is until she really asks somebody because you're not very magical. Does that go under like items? Or yes. Equipment? So if you go to inventory, mm -hmm. and then go to manage inventory, you can just look up cloak of elven kind. So you can check that. Is there a that. difference between equipment or backpack? No. Okay. And then once you're there, just make sure to equip it. So that just means, like, clicking the check mark next to it. Cool. Um, yeah, definitely grab that, because I don't actually have a cloak for this trip, so I'm at least going to take it. Yeah. Um, and I guess I'll just kind of hang out, see if anybody comes in until the meeting. Okay. Um... Then, how about Kyrie? What do you do when you wake up that next morning? No. Mm. You do? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I know that, um, Taryn lives in the shop, um, above, above the shop. So I immediately look at it, I look at the note, and I run... 
I run to Taryn's place. Okay. <laughs> and I bang on the door, and then I'm like, whatever, and I just kind of <laughs> yeah. push through, and I go up to Taryn, and I'm like, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> then I violently wake up. <laughs> Okay. You violently yeah. wake up to a letter on your chest as well. Gosh, okay. So you have this in your hand, you open the door for your friend, and you're just very confused. I think we both have this look of, like, we got the same thing. And I think my first instinct is to go to my back rooms and kind of, like, make sure all of my potion-making equipment is kind of hidden from view. Mm-hmm. And then we both agree to go. Mm-hmm. I forget. Does it say go alone, or does it? Is there rules on who and who can and cannot come with? It doesn't say anything about going alone, but you both got the same letter, so you can assume that you're going to the same place. All right. So then we talk about it, and we agree to go together for safety. <laughs> Do. Uh, you do anything else before the, uh, announcement? I just think we kind of check all of our loose ends. Okay. We make sure none of my ocean-making equipment or writing equipment for the gossip column is seen. It's hidden in a place, like, beneath the floorboards or behind the cabinet. So I just tie up all the loose ends before any, uh, major announcements or we travel to the destination that was on the letter. Okay. So, the clock strikes noon. It is announcement time. And you all, for convenience sake, happen to be standing right next to each other. Gosh. Um, that's so convenient. That's so convenient. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that, I don't know if you guys like know each other very well, but you're all there standing right next to each other. And as you guys walk up and you stand there and you wait for news to come out, um, a large crowd is slowly gathering. And just four knights are kind of standing on like a makeshift stage, which is essentially just like a table and um, as you stand there and you wait you see um, the night from before from yesterday walk up and then stands in front of the table and um, motions for everybody to quiet down when a hush falls over the crowd, he takes out a paper and he goes, I here have a letter from the king and queen. The letter states that they have reason to believe that the citizens here are trying to rally against them and if these accusations are proven true people will start to become banished into the forest and he also takes a takes a deep breath looking excited about this particular paragraph and says the king and queen want to remind their citizens that they remain safe within these cast within these uh, these gates within these walls, and that trying to leave the kingdom is punishment in death, as well as trying as well as writing or spreading gossips about the royal family has now is now going to be punishable by death so the so for the players the punishment for 
strictly just gossiping has gone up from banishment, which is already not great, to death. And it seems... Actually, can all of you make a insight check for me really quick? I got 20. 20? But that's plus the link. Eight. Okay, what about, um... Where? I got a 20. 20? And then... Yeah. And Avery got a 7. Okay, so... The people who both rolled 20s, you seem to realize that that means people have been trying to escape lately and that there seems to be a reason that the royal family is trying to keep everybody all in the same place. And you don't know if that means it's dangerous out there or if they just are, they just like need these people for like control reasons. But it seems that there's been a increase of people who are managing to get over the gate, like, to go over the gates and to leave the kingdom. But from what you've all like, been told, there is nothing out there. That if you go out I've, there, you just, there's just a forest and you die. Is the, like, kingdom we're all, like, contained in or whatever is it like a big like city because obviously like live here but like is it big like i don't know how to describe the question i'm trying to ask just for me to get a like all right it is visual it is like a little town it's bigger than a it's bigger than a town it's not as big as like chicago it's like it's like it's like the size of a the size of like a like a medium sized town. Like there's there's like schools for kids. There's enough. There's like a very like a pretty decent amount of people here, and they're all of like different backgrounds. You have like you have like humans and elves and gnomes and halflings and um, like all of this for for like player purposes. It's it's oh uh, like it's relatively it's relatively big and the fact that people the fact that there's a a big enough amount of people to go like missing and go over the wall means that it's it, it was a very large amount of people who were trying to escape okay Thanks. since i'm like super old has it like has it all Since you're super old, uh, and no, it has not always been like that. I want to wait for you to respond before I continue ch- talking. Always been like this? Like, I understand that it's being... Okay, hello? Okay, you're back. I'm back. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, has it... Has the, the kingdom always been like this? Like, I understand it's getting stricter in recent days, but, like, has it always been, like... Nobody can leave. You have to stay within the walls. Blah blah blah. Um, it, it it wasn't always nobody can leave, but it was like it's always been highly encouraged that everybody stays here. Okay. It's like you can leave if you want to, but the royal family genuinely doesn't see why you would want to. Okay. As for, like, y- like Poplin, I guess that's up to you as to whether or not you have ever left before. Okay. But as you guys all take in the announcement, um, you look around, people are like, like looking around and you hear like comments from random people being like, yeah, my, my cousin left and never came back or like... My sister went, said that she would come back and never did, and, like, you hear, like, 
everybody knows someone who knows someone who has attempted to leave. Can I do, like, an insight check or something to see if these people are, like, government plants or if they're, like, legitimately people that have had somebody disappear? Go ahead and make an insight check. Well, that's not good. Uh, hold on. Uh, that's a seven. Oh, yeah. These people all know somebody who disappeared. Yeah. A hundred percent. They might know multiple people, actually. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but the, the knights kind of disperse themselves into the, into the crowd just to, like, more of, like, crowd control of, like, you could go on about your day, but always, like, keep it in the back of your mind that we are always watching. So you guys can stay, chat, leave, do whatever you think you need to do to prepare for, um, to prepare for midnight. Yeah, I'm gonna head back to the. I'm gonna head back to the library, mm-hmm. and assume. Uh, I assume I'm gonna meet Danny there, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna ask if he, like, has asked around at all yet mm-hmm. for strange underground places. So you, well, Danny is at the is there. Because it was like, a mandatory... Like physically like standing next to me? Or like Not just physically went to the standing. meeting on his own? He went to the meeting on his own. He okay. was going to meet up with you, but lost track of time. Um, but he spots you, makes his way to you, and says, Okay, so I, I do have... I do have a few leads there. Only one of them is like of value. The others are kind of like, this might work. I would say your best bet is to go to the bookstore downtown. Um, apparently, it's run by um, it's run by this woman who is really good at making potions. So maybe you can buy one off of her, or like ask her for one, or I don't know. I think that's your best I'll bet. Check it out. Um. There's a there's like an antique shop a few a few doors down from that that like might have things but you know it's an antique shop so it might have things it might not but really there's not most magic is either very 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 secret or has already been taken away All right, and with that, we're going to just make my way back to the... And you said it's about noon, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So, I... What do I, what do I want to do? I don't know. Uh, I get, I'll go to the bookstore. I'll, go, I'll head to the bookstore. Okay. Well, I guess I should ask Taryn... <laughs> What you doing? I'm heading back to my shop conveniently. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, is uh, um Kyrie going with you? Yes, of course. Okay, so you two head back to the bookshop, and like almost as soon as you get there, somebody walks in. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Is that somebody me or is this a different? No, somebody? that's somebody. That's somebody's <laughs> that's you. Me. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I'm gonna look around. There's nobody else like in the store at the moment. It's just the. It's just the. It's just the two of them and you. Okay. Just... Okay, so I greet you at the door. And I asked you. <laughs> I ask you what you're here looking for. I'm gonna kind of just like, 
because I, I I assume I recognize which of them is like the owner. Uh huh. Honestly, but, I'd say honestly, give me an insight check. I don't know. Yeah. Because they're pretty much like like joint at the hip. <laughs> okay. All right, you said insight. Yes. Uh, that's an eight. Okay, um, I guess, Taryn, are you trying to hide the fact that you are the owner? Are you very, like, are you like, this is me? This is my bookstore. Yeah. But I think if, I don't know, I think if you kind of, like, quietly hint that you're looking for something else, then, like, I don't know, there's, like, a secret password, I guess. Like, a secret thing. <laughs> Just say, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a, a book about potions, perhaps, if you have any books of that sort. <laughs> yes, and I say yes, but we only sell those during the nighttime hours. Simple. And I'm just going to turn around and leave, like, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like, you can come back because this is some tricky business. I can't be handing out this stuff in broad daylight. <laughs> I understand. I understand. So I, I kindly ask you to come back mm, yeah. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Got it. Alright. And I don't know. I guess from there I'll just head back to the library and keep doing library things until 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, how about Eliana? Where are you heading off to? Close meeting. We still got like 12 hours. Yeah. Um, I don't dwell on it, but I briefly ponder about what happened to my mom because she disappeared when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And then I... I'm, since I'm still planning to go, I head over, I'm still like mentally making my plan on where I'm disappearing to for my dad. And I'm also going to talk to Sailor to let her know I will not be around, but I don't want to tell her where I'm going. Okay. So where I assume since she loves a good gossip and like to meet me, I assume she's also going to head to the antique shop. Okay. So you guys reconvene at the antique shop and she like... She's looking at you with, like, eyes wide open, like, oh my gosh. Did you know that, like, my uncle's brother's friend's cousin went over the wall and never returned? Does she seem the type, or do I pick, does she seem the type to, like, tell a story 18 times and forget who she's told it to? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I... <laughs> Tell her I have heard, but ask, has she heard anything recently, since these seem to be new developments? Oh, she thinks for a second, and she goes, well, I mean, I don't know anybody personally, but, like, some of my friends know people who know people. Okay. I kind of, like, not in sympathy for, like, the knowing and knowing and, like, still not knowing what happened to my mom. But it's also Sailor, and I've kind of learned over the years she's not the most credible source of info. Um, and then I steer towards... Tell her, like, it's unfortunate timing. <laughs> but I'm headed on a research trip on, like, the other side of... Like, a mini-research trip on the other side of the kingdom. She's, so like, like, immediately enthralled. Like, oh my gosh, what are you researching? I'm looking for more uh, information on some of the mysterious books the antique shop has recently acquired. I want to know more about them so that I know what to sell them for. Okay, uh, give a give me a deception check. Mm. 
Uh, 22. She rolled a nat one on her insight, so... <laughs> she's like, that, okay, good luck. How long will you be gone, do you know? I do not. I want to get as much information as possible, and since it's a little bit of a trek, I don't want to have to go back and forth. Right, right, makes, makes sense, makes sense. Well, uh, good luck, and let me know when you're back in town. I will. Um, so I think... You go. No, you, you you can continue. Okay. Um, I think after we like say bye or whatever, I go ahead and close shop early and head home. Tell my dad a very similar story and start grabbing my things to prep. Okay. No world necessary. He believes you. He doesn't have any any like care enough to not believe you. So what all are you like? planning on taking with you like are you um, are you bringing like food yeah i bring uh, enough food for like let's say a couple days i don't know do you need a number no okay. and then i have a like quarter staff i want to grab okay um some like just in the general like character build thing it had some things it just automatically gave me so do you need those no i know what they all are you <laughs> okay i want to grab those things yeah um yeah i think i just grabbed those and some like no just that okay so i'm everybody grabs all the all of the like rations that they need if there's something very specific that you're like particularly wanting, then let me know. But if not, we'll cut to 10 p.m. I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, <clears throat> just like my weapons and my yeah. uh, other equipment and stuff. Nothing interesting. Okay. So it is now 10 p.m. And, um... Poplin, you're making your way back to the late night bookstore? Yes. So, um, Kyrie, are you there with her at this time? Or. Yes, I am. Okay. So, Poplin walks in. You two of you are, are there. Uh, go ahead Hi. and continue Hi. the scene. Okay, uh, I make sure that it's just. Me, Kyrie, and the customer, and I ask, what are you looking for? Well, to be honest with you, I don't particularly know. Um, I've had something of an, of an adventure kind of just sprung on me, so I'm trying to just get stocked up before I leave. Um, how? Taren, what, what do you have? Taryn, insight check. Eleven. Kyrie, insight check. <laughs> and Poplar, make a deception check. Okay. Um, you said deception, yeah. uh, that's an eight. We're on 19. Okay, so, Taryn, you know something's up, but Kyrie, he said he just got a mission sprung on him. You just got a mission sprung on you. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds very familiar, so I guess... We, me and Kyrie look at each other and we ask what it's about. To be honest, I have no idea. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a long story. I, okay, I really and then just... we ask, did you yeah, get ahead. a note in the middle of the night as well? 
Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Crazy coincidence. <laughs> So, okay. are you looking for potions for, like, protection, per se? Or, like, how, what do you want to get out of, um, being stocked up? If you have any kind of, like, healing potions or resistance potions, that would be ideal. We just made some last night. How we much are they? It's a currency. You can it's like gold silver. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm so poor, so be gentle. Okay. Because you are in the same predicament, I will give you a discount. So it is one silver piece per potion. Okay, I will say so that we don't have an insane <laughs> amount of potions. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Do? So that is so extraordinarily cheap. Yeah. So okay. I'm gonna say, um, you each can have two. Mm -hmm. And, um, I will say, you can either do a potion of. Invisibility, a potion of healing, or a, or a um, mm, I'm looking at the potion list right now, or a potion of um, what is the one that I want to do, or, or a potion of uh, giant strength, um, but you only get two each. And because Tara and Sonia made them, Tara and you can get three. Mm -hmm. Just add them to your inventory and let me know either right now or via Discord when you figure it out which ones you are adding. Mm -hmm. um, and. So you said I can get two of them, right? You can get two potions. Um, Kyrie, if you want potions for the mission, you can have two potions. Taryn, if you want potions, you can have three. Just either DM me what you want, put them in your character info, or let me know right now. And you can just add them to your, um, inventory. I'll take the healing and invisibility. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking, an. Uh invisibility potion and you said it was a potion of just giant strength mm -hmm. that one just kind of makes your ac at your ac no sorry makes your um modifier for strength a plus five is it is it because there's like six different sorry giant uh hill, hill giant strength hill giant strength okay um Actually, I'm just going to take two invisibility potions. Okay. And then, Taryn, you can take three. Um, I'll add one more healing. Okay. Uh, Kyrie, do you want to take any? I'll take... Um, it's healing, invisibility, and what's the other one? Hill Giant Strength. Okay, I'll do a potion of healing and then the strength one. Okay. Um, I guess exchange the two silver. The two silver, <laughs> lovely. Okay. And, um, is there anything else that you two, that you three want to prepare for? Are you just... Stick it out together for the rest of the night, or you go, or is Poplar heading back to the library or home? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the library and get all of my, uh, like put all my equipment and stuff on. Okay. I don't okay. know if I said I did that already, but I want to do that now because tonight is when we're meeting, right at midnight. That works. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. 
Okay, so you head back to the shop. You head back to the library. You get everything that you need. Um, as you're when you're at the library. Um, oh my goodness. When you're at the library, Danny is kind of like nervously pacing everywhere. And then when he sees you walk in, he calms down and he takes out a, he takes out a bag of, um, 20 gold and hands it to you and says, you might need this. Thank you, Danny. You said 20? Yeah. And I'm just going to kind of, like, nod and then give him a hug and get my stuff and take off. Okay. Um, is there anything, uh, Eliana, you want to do right before midnight? I want to... Because I know there's some, like, magic-y things in the antique shop, even if I can't always identify them. <laughs> I'm going to, like, double-check that they're, like, not in plain sight from the windows and that the, like, locks are extra strong. Okay. You can... You can make a... Make a investigation check and also a, a sleight-of-hand check. Okay. The investigation check is 11, and the sleight of hand is nice one. So you you find a few things that could be magic. You're not entirely sure. Um, and then before you get the chance to put them away, you're like, oh, I got to go. And now they're all in a pile. Uh, and you just you leave leaving them leaving like four or five things that very well could be magical uh just in a pile behind the cash register fantastic <laughs> is the door locked yeah you can lock you lock the door behind okay. you okay yeah. so and then is there anything really quick that Kyrie and Taryn want to do before Midnight? I don't think so. I don't think so. We have our potions in hand and we're just waiting for the customer that came by to come back. Okay. So, Poplin, you reconvene with Taryn and uh, Kyrie, and um, the three of you make your way to the castle. And as you're making your way to the castle, you see another figure is also making her way to the castle and the four of you are like the four of you notice each other can i have like, my like hood up because like i don't want people to not see me but i don't want people to quite know who i am because it's like midnight and i'm walking to the castle yes you can put your hood up <laughs> Do I have a hood? I you are wearing that cloak. Yep. Okay. So. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So. The three of you can make perception checks with disadvantage. That's unfortunate. And then. Um, Eliana, you can make a stealth check with advantage. I got a six. You're not rolling really well today. Well, you gave me disadvantage, and I had a six and an 18. Or I got a, I rolled a, I rolled a two and an 18, and then I have a plus four in stealth. <laughs> or in perception. Well, I got a five. With advantage? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So you, I mean, unless Taryn and uh, Kyra roll a lower than a five, you guys notice that someone is walking in the same direction that you're walking and trying not to be noticed. Okay. 
So do you guys do anything about what you're seeing? This is kind of not what you just asked, but like as we were walking over, I want to have like introduced myself to, I, I already forget your names, your characters' names. I'm so sorry, but I introduced myself. Taryn and Kyrie. Yes. Okay. Ter Taryn? Yes. Okay. So you guys introduce yourselves on the walkover, um, and the four of you reconvene at um, the gates of the castle where you were told to meet. Except there's four of you and not three of you like you thought. Once we get, uh, once we get close enough, uh, I'm going to say to this strange person, because I assume we're like, you know, all kind of convening in the same area. Yeah. Just say like, did you get a letter to? Can I like get a vibe? Yes, oh, you can. People, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, make a vibe check. <laughs> no, a vibe check is an insight check. Cool. Okay, I was rolling, like, really well, and now they're kind of below average. I got an eight. Do I need to do anything to contest that, or...? No, with the eight, what, no. do, what does she, what does she see? What is it, what's the vibe that you give off? Uh, scared little old man that is... <laughs> clutching a piece of paper in his fist that is standing with two other strange women. I mean, that's the vibe. I don't know what else is going on. I just look scared and nervous. Um, yeah, I got a note. Did it sort of just appear yes okay did you get one yep yeah. all three of us did and do you know anything about what's going on nope decided to come check it out what well, lovely I guess now we wait until something happens. <laughs> All right, perfect segue. That is episode one of the Real D&D podcast. Next episode, we will figure out what the heck is these letters about? Who are they meeting at the gates of the castle? What adventure are they going on? And will their secrets be revealed? That is all for us here. I am Kat. I'm happy to be your lovely DM. And I will see you next time.